Hey everyone, Sam McKay here from Enterprise DNA. Today I want to show you how in your date table in Power BI you can actually add workday numbers and weekend numbers. Now, I've had uh, I've seen I've seen this quite a bit, especially on the Enterprise uh, DNA support forum, where users are trying to analyze like for like within months or within years. So you actually want to analyze, say, the first working day of a month versus the same uh, time last year, the same. Uh, first working day of the same month last year and so uh, i have shown i'll just jump to the uh, support forum uh, a previous support forum request where you could actually work this out within measures where you can actually create a measure that tells you on any specific day what a work day is versus um, what number weekend day it is now, someone though, another another enterprise DNA member wanted to actually work out well, what is? Uh, can you add this to the date table? And look, I think this is this is a good application, uh, and uh, and and certainly there's there's maybe um, uh, you know, reasons to suggest that this is actually um, a better solution in some cases. So what I did was I, I uh, tested a few things out and and mocked it up in in the date table. So that's what I want to cover. I want to cover how you actually. Uh, how you actually do that or the formula you need to use to actually do it. So let's drill into it. Now, before we actually go into the formulas, what you do want to most likely do here is create this particular column first. So this one I've got selected. Now, what we want to do is we want to, based on this day and week column right here, we want to actually have a column which which shows what is a work day and what is a weekend. So I've got uh, if the day and week is either uh, not six or not zero, which is Saturday and Sunday in this particular date table, then make that equal to a work day. If it is those numbers, then make that equal to a weekend. And then we have our work day um, and weekend column um, all listed down in one column. Now, based on that, we can then number these, but we have to just write a little bit of logic. Now, if you think, let's just think out before we dive into the formula, think what we need to do. What we need to basically do is within any month, we need to filter only days in that that would be considered a work day right so we need to basically virtually create a table that goes inside that only evaluates the work days or only evaluates the weekends and then from there basically rank those days from 1 to 20 or 21 or 22 so that's the theory or that's the logic especially for for, for a work day if it's a weekend obviously you're going to have a lot less days but uh, for a work day we're going to be trying to go 1 to 20 21 22 or something like that so this is how we do it now the first thing we need to do is write a few variables here so we've got to write uh, first of all understand what month and year we're in right because the month and year is um, how we're going to determine how many or the, the bounds in which this this revised virtual table is going to be and so we first of all work out what month and year we're in and then within each different row here what we do is we remove all context uh, inside this filter, we remove all context from dates. So basically, we evaluate every single day and then reduce the table. So at the moment, if you think about what the virtual table looks like with just this, we're looking at every single date. But then what we do is we contract the table and by looking at only work days and then filtering also by the current month, which is this variable here. So if you think about what this particular table now looks like, it is a table of just the working days in the current month that we are in. So on any particular row in this particular result, we're evaluating a table of dates, which is only work days in this, partic in the, in this particular month. Then we uh, move down uh, into the return area. So this is where we, the true evaluation gets uh, takes place and the result is return. Then we work out, well, if the day type equals to weekend, then we want to make that equal blank. And then here is where uh, the core of this calculation gets take, uh, takes place. We want to create a rank of days, right? And so within the rank, we need to actually put the virtual table. So that's what this month table is. So this is what the, the variable is doing, the hard work there on the virtual table. We place it into uh, we place it into the rank X and then we go and evaluate or rank the day of month. So you see what this this column here is? So it's quite a, quite an interesting trick. We've got the day of every single month here, right? Or well, we can 
evaluate and rank from one to whatever each different day here. And um, so obviously, uh, say one is going to be ranked lower or higher, de depending on if you make this ascending or descending, it's going to be ranked higher, higher or lower than any of these other dates, obviously. Um, but what's what's cool here is that then it can return it. Uh, the the rank is going to return it, um, you know, one after the other. So one, two, three, four, five, uh, instead of um, having to you know evaluate the intermediary weekend numbers in this case. So pretty interesting use of rank X, right? Pretty interesting use of rank X. So let's just jump over to weekend and I'll run through that as well. Now, if you think about the logic that went into work, the workday number, think about the logic that goes into weekend number. Well, all we really need to change is the virtual table that we're evaluating over. And all we needed to change was this particular parameter here. So instead of the virtual table being uh, for workdays, we want it to actually be weekends. And so obviously this particular table is going to evaluate to a much smaller one than the workday one. And then again, we're just going to, this is the key part of the formula, we're just going to use rank X to rank each of the day of months that this um, uh, that, that it might be, that, that a weekend date might be. And then that's going to give us the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So pretty great technique, right? Pretty cool technique of adding workday numbers and weekend numbers to your date table. And then from here, you can run some time intelligence based on the workday numbers and weekend numbers. Now, what I'll, I'll probably do is leave that for another video because some of that um, logic is going to be slightly different to say general time intelligence calculations. But this gives you a start, right? This gets you um, halfway there. And then from there, it's just a, ma a matter of evaluating um, or writing some logic and writing some formula that allows you to do time intelligence based on these work days and weekends. Now, on Enterprise DNA TV, I've actually uh, created a lot of videos around uh, how to do time intelligence with non-standard um, dates, non-standard date tables, four, four, five, five calendars, etc. And so certainly search for those if that's what you need. And, and you're going to have to use similar logic, not exactly, but similar logic to actually run time intelligence with these ones as well. In, maybe in follow-up videos, I might expand on this a little bit more um, because I think there's some, some pretty cool stuff that you can do around this, but um, but this is certainly how, how you're going to set things up to actually get there. Okay, I'm going to round things off. Hopefully, uh, that was uh, you found this one interesting and you liked the content. If you did, um, throw the video a like. Really appreciate it. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe uh, to Enterprise DNA TV. Lots of content coming out about Power BI. And another thing as well, um, don't forget to check out the Enterprise DNA Support Forum. There's actually a lot of information here. Uh, it's, it is available for anyone to search for, for, for things and to try and find out um, answers to, to unique such, um, questions that you might have. If you do want to post in it though, you do have to just be an Enterprise DNA member. So that's something to uh, maybe have a look at if you do want to get some support and assistance on your, on your development in Power BI. Okay, all the best and talk to you soon.